Hi there, I'm Ann. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me today on Facebook Live to share with you one of my greatest passions right now, and everyone in the office is sick of it. I think they're hoping that this will get it out of my system, so I'll stop talking about it. But um, my passion is kombucha, and this is probably a drink that you've heard of or that you enjoy. Um, what is kombucha? Basically, it is fermented tea. So it's fermented sweet iced tea. You'll find it a lot of times in the grocery store. It looks like this, comes in a nice big bottle. And the fermenting part makes this drink really wonderful for so many reasons. It makes the drink fizzy and it makes the drink tangy. Um, as it ferments, there's good for you bacteria that forms in the beverage and that bacteria eats up most of the sugar, so a lot of the residual sugar is gone from the drink by the time you drink it. And like I said, there's good for you bacteria in there. So this is a probiotic drink. We are learning more and more, and like every day I come into work, there's some new study and some new great piece of information about probiotics and about gut health. So uh, kombucha is a drink that can help your gut. Um, it has <laughs> lactobacillus bacteria. I think that's how you say it. Um, that's, how I'm, that's what I'm gonna go with. Um, and I just love it. Um, I love it because it's good for me and I love it because frankly, I think it's delicious. It's tart and fizzy. And so I started drinking kombucha a lot, um, at least once a day. And it, those of you who love it know that once you buy it and you pay tax, you're paying about $4 a bottle. And I thought, this is insane. I cannot support this habit, but it's a real habit. So I learned how to make it. And it's really not hard. Things may get a little weird if this is new to you um, when we start talking about, and I'll show you the mother, but I'm going to wait. I need to know that you're with me. I need to know that you're on board. And we'll, we'll look at the mother. I love my mother. Um, <laughs> we'll look at it in a minute. Um, but I'm going to show you first how you can make your own mother and sort of what the basics of kombucha making is. So I start with a one gallon jar. I, I bought this at Target. Our local Target has them. It's a big one gallon ball jar. I find that it's just very easy to work with one gallon. Um, actually, I always have three gallons going at a time because, again, I, I have a, um, a habit. So, to start making your own mother, again, I'm not showing it to you yet. We're, we're going to build up some suspense. You start by using a little bit of plain, unflavored, this just says original, plain, unflavored kombucha. And that already has some good bacteria in it. Um, one thing about kombucha, you, if you buy it and you drink it, you notice there are usually some little floaties in there. Doesn't bother me. I love it. The more, the merrier. Look, I'm half Korean, so I'm used to fermented things. It doesn't freak me out. Um, but uh, you start with two cups or a 16 ounce bottle of that. And then you add a strong, sweet iced tea base to it. So. For your iced tea, you can use green tea, you can use black tea, or you can use white tea. I would say don't use herbal teas because some of those herbs have antimicrobial properties that might inhibit mm. bacterial um, flourishing. And that's what you want in this. You want bacteria. Again, it's good for you bacteria. And when you do this correctly, what happens is there is an acidic environment, that's why it tastes tangy, that does not allow that bad bacteria to live, but it allows the good bacteria to thrive. So, like I said, you start with a strong iced tea. You're gonna use, um, uh, to make a gallon, either four of these big sort of iced tea, family size tea bags, or 16 of the single size. So, guess which route I usually take, because I'm lazy. I usually go for the four family size tea bags. It's gonna brew up a really strong iced tea, with that mix, you use one cup of sugar. Now, it's a lot of sugar, and it tastes very sweet in the beginning, but like I said, as those bacteria start thriving, they eat the sugar, and then the drink becomes very nice and tart. So, you add your tea to the jug, and then top off with water. This is distilled water. I always use tap water at home. But you can use distilled, a lot of people say to definitely use distilled water. Um, I'm just doing this so I don't have to turn my back and go to the sink. Mm -hmm. um, so you fill it up nearly to the top. So right now this is just a little bit of kombucha, we'll call it starter, unflavored kombucha, strong iced tea, top it off with water, and then what you'll do is you'll cover it with a cloth or I just use coffee filters. 
You want it to be able to breathe and you don't want little fruit flies to be able to get in there. So this is the beginning. If you want to create your own or grow your own mother or SCOBY, I'll explain that in a minute, this is how you start. You leave this out of direct sunlight, doesn't have to be in the dark, just out of direct sunlight for anywhere from two weeks to four weeks. And what you'll see is that on the surface of the liquid, as you keep checking, it will become a little spitty <laughs> looking at first, a little bubbles. And then it will look like there's a little opaque sort of film on the surface. And once you can lift that off, that is your SCOBY, that is your mother. So SCOBY is an acronym, stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast. And that is the key to brewing your own kombucha. So this is how you start. If you're just joining us, I'm talking about making homemade kombucha. I've just showed how you can start making your own mother. So I did it this way. You can order a SCOBY off the internet, which I know seems kind of weird, but it's totally everywhere. You can order um, from several sources off the internet. I wanted to know where my SCOBY came from, so I chose to kind of create my own. Um, and for me, it, I started it in the winter time and it took three and a half or four weeks. But it was worth it because I wanted to kind of experience the whole thing from start to finish. So that's the way you start off. And then, once you have grown a SCOBY, you can start brewing uh, every couple of weeks. Quick question for you, Ann. Yep. Does the tea have to be cooled before you add it to the starter? That is a great question. Um, yes, the tea needs to be cooled um, because you don't want to kill that um, bacteria in the yeast. Um, those are living things. You don't want to burn them and kill them. So, definitely. Um, Make sure your tea has either come to room temperature or if you're short on time, like I usually am, add some ice to it to bring it down to a little bit lower than body temperature. Then it'll be perfect. That was a good question. Okay, so once you have a mother, and I'm gonna bring my guy. So I brought this in from home. This is one of my jugs that I, um, that I do. It's dated from um, last Monday. So it's gone for a week. So uh, I'll show you what the mother looks like. You're still with me. Okay, here's where it's gonna start getting weird. Don't freak out, be, be, be good, be good. Um, so let me, just, let me just show you and then we'll talk about her. Her, cause she's a mother. Okay, so this is my mother. I'm so proud of my mother. My children are always like, oh my gosh. So this is what the mother <laughs> looks like. Um, some people call it mushroom tea. It is not a mushroom. It is a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. And you see it has a little layer. So every time you brew a batch, this is reusable. Every time you brew a batch of kombucha, a new layer sort of grows on top. <laughs> um, and actually, I um, am becoming known as the SCOBY lady because you can peel off a layer and you can give it to someone to start their own batch of kombucha. So, so actually, you could start selling it on the internet. So, so actually, I'm gonna float this guy. So this is a new baby scoby. And if I put it here on this um, mixture of raw kombucha and iced tea, then this is the beginnings of a new batch of kombucha. So it's kind of sinking right now. It will eventually float back up to the surface. And what it'll do is it's a little bit smaller than the um, circumference, but as it brews and as it ferments, it will make itself exactly the size of the vessel, which is kind of cool. Okay, quick question. Yeah. So you started with an original bottle of kombucha, unsweetened, unflavored. Yep. You added tea and then water, and then you and added- sugar. And sugar. And then you added the mother. You can't make it without the mother. You cannot make kombucha without the, the mother. mother. Okay. Right. But you need the original bottle. Right. Okay. So when I show just kind of the bottle of unflavored kombucha and the sweet tea, that's how you make your own mother. Okay. If you just let that sit for three to four weeks, you'll form your own mother. The liquid in here will probably be too sour at that point to drink. You may want to use it like vinegar, um, use it in recipes. But um, but you'll need to kind of start over the whole process. So um, I'll get to that. I, I think okay. a little bit of repetition will kind of help everyone see. Um, okay, so I have my friend Amanda here. I don't know, are you? Hi, Facebook. Are you? Um, that looks like an alien. Are you a mother lover? <laughs> that looks like an alien. So 
Um, so, and when you were saying that people sell the mother yeah. online, yeah, there are like, companies. does it come like that? It comes like that. I mean, That's mine is okay. mine is very dark because I use black tea yeah. always. Um, so that's why it's dark. A lot of times the ones that you'll see that you can order, they're more cream colored, and those were probably in green tea kombuchas. Mm. So, okay. Um, I'm gonna show you a little bit of, so I have a, um, a batch that has gone through the first fermentation. Okay, so there are two stages of fermentation. The first fermentation happens in the big jug, and then um, once it's gone about a week or two weeks, depending on your preference, um, I like it to taste pretty sour. Um, you should always taste it. Can I get you to taste it? Absolutely. Um, so, I tasted this this morning. It tasted slightly effervescent. Are tasting from here? Yeah. Let's just get it okay. in here. It's uh, way less sweet than when it started out. It's a little bit tangy. You can still sort of taste the tea flavor. Let's have um, some more. But and it's, it's uh, a little bit fizzy already. So I know that it's at the right point. So I've poured off two cups in here, and I'm gonna save that for a minute because I need that for my next batch. It's sort of like the starter and the mother. So starter. Um, some things that are helpful if you're making it. I love these little swing top bottles. They're great for um, for bottling. Where'd you get those from? Um, I ordered them off of Amazon. Um, I think it was like nineteen dollars for twelve or six. I don't remember. Sorry. Um, and then it's helpful to have a spouted vessel to help you with the bottling. So I won't do all of these. I'll do this later off camera because it's bottling day. <laughs> so I know that one batch of kombucha makes five of these plus two little guys. I'll explain these in just a second. So a funnel is very, very, very helpful. You just pour your booch. And look, see, it's already fizzy. And so it's bu bubbling up. Sometimes it bubbles up a little too much and I'll need to let it sit there for a minute and top it off. So there's that. Um, that will be a plain, unflavored kombucha. I love to add flavorings and I usually juice my own fruit because I'm, you know, I'm that annoying person. I like to do all that. I go to the farmer's market, I'm like, what, what do she's we have? She's really cool is what she's saying. <laughs> um, some of my favorite flavors so far have been strawberry and blackberry. Those are awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I tried rhubarb. Did not love it, I have to say. Um, and one of my latest favorites is I, I was lazy one night as I was bottling my homemade kombucha. Um, and I didn't want to juice anything and I had some basil in my backyard little um, overgrown garden and I just threw some basil sprigs in the bottles. And I actually have some that maybe will taste yes. better. And I thought that was awesome. The um, basil really adds a lot of flavor. But if I'm Flavoring, I usually use about three tablespoons of juice. So I'm using just a purchased juice here. This is pomegranate juice. So I would suggest starting with three tablespoons of juice in the bottle and then top it off with your kombucha. Now, Anne, how many times did you make this at home until you felt like you had the swing of it? It took uh, probably about four or five batches before I kind of understood um, how the fermentation process worked in my kitchen with you know my room temperature. And of course it's changed um, now that we're in the heat of summer. Um, things, the process goes a lot more quickly now. So um, with these bottles, you just snap them down. So this is second fermentation. I'm going to explain a little bit more about that. So in second fermentation, this is when you bottle and presumably what you're going to drink the um, kombucha out of. This is when real carbonation happens. So if you're going to flavor the kombucha, wait until this stage to flavor it. Don't flavor it in the big jug because that might interfere with the bacteria uh, thriving and flourishing. Wait until you bottle. My suggestion is Mm, about three tablespoons of fruit juice. Um, like I said, you can juice your own fruit, which I love. It's a great way to use in seasoned produce. Um, and then just top it off with a kombucha. Leave this, again, in a place out of direct sunlight for anywhere from four to 10 days. Um, so let me sh show you what this little plastic bottle is for. So whenever I brew a batch of kombucha, I always 
include one or two that I do in a plastic bottle. Now, I buy my kids these sport drinks sometimes, so these make great reusable bottles because they are sturdy, um, they can be washed, and they're great. So, the reason I do that is, I'm scared of exploding bottles. Um, I've heard some <laughs> horror stories about kombucha carbonating so much that the glass bottle breaks. But this is a tip that I read um, somewhere and it's great because what happens is you pour it in here in the bottle, you can squeeze it, and it has some give. Hold on one second. Amanda, squeeze no. that bottle. Squeezing it. Okay. Well, I also feel like anytime I've seen a kombucha bottle like explode, it's when people have shaken yes. them. Because I think they Mine see everything at the bottom, you know, yeah. the mother, all of that fun stuff. And yeah. they're like, get it out of here. But yeah. So you can squeeze it every day and you see once it becomes rock hard, you know that a lot of carbonation has built up. That one's probably too hard. I'm not weak, hard. I promise. You just can't. Um, yeah, let's don't open that, guys. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's no. Going to explode. But yeah. So this is a great oh, tip crazy. to show you like when it's achieved proper carbonation. So. Because you can't know that. You cannot know that in, in the, the bottle. Bottles. That's very smart. So, um, so I always do that. Yeah, um, I'm not going to open this. One. And so, first fermentation happens in the big jug. Second fermentation happens in the individual bottles. And then um, after that, once it's you know once you know that you've achieved the carbonation level that you want, you pop these guys in the refrigerator. And then that stops the carbonation process. It so holds it, it where it is. I have a question for you yeah. because kombucha was taken off of the shelf for a little while because of the alcohol content because it's fermented. And right. they're still on some of the brands they do have like a 21 and over yeah. warning. So you have to be of legal drinking age. Yes. So how at what stage would it get like that? Like what should you be aware of when you're brewing this at home? I would say if you are sensitive to alcohol or if you are avoiding alcohol, I would not suggest that you drink or make kombucha. There is some alcohol in the finished product that's part of this whole fermentation thing. It's similar, I know it's different, but it's similar to in wine making, you know, as mm -hmm. yeast eats up the sugars, yeah. converts some of them to alcohol. The alcohol content in kombucha, and I haven't sent my own off to a lab, so I don't know, but. Um, Average alcohol um, rate in kombucha is 0.5% or less, usually. And that's legal in the United States for be, being called non-alcoholic. Yeah. Um, but there is some alcohol, and depending on how long you let it ferment, the alcohol content yeah. will be higher or lower. But again, if you're avoiding alcohol, this is not for you. Um, if you don't mind a little, then it's great. And not to make light of anything, I've been told by several people, including several people today, and maybe one person who's on camera with me, that um, kombucha is great for a hangover. Um, so, there's that. Um, so, let me just show you. So, as I'm doing bottling day, this is what happens. So, I bottle all my kombucha. I don't know if you remember, but at the beginning, I set aside two cups. So, this kind of takes us back to where we were in the beginning. I have two cups of the kombucha that I reserved. I pour that into my jug. I'm going to add my tea. This is my strong brewed tea. Four family sized tea bags, one cup of sugar, cooled off to just below body temperature. That goes in there. And then more water. And then we're going to top it off with water. Again, at home I usually use tap water, but I know I've read a lot. A lot of people um, say that. Um, Chlorine in the water may interfere with the fermentation. Tell me I've when. never had a problem. I go pretty much up to Tell the top. When. That's good? Okay. And then um, the mother goes on. And as I showed earlier, the mother, every time you brew a new batch, you get another little layer. So this is actually several layers. If you're nice and your friends are into it, you can give away um, a SCOBY. Um, to your friends so they can bring their it's own. It's a great present. I think so. I've given several away here at work because <laughs> I'm obsessed. Um, and then you cover it with, this is my ratty old um, double layer of coffee filters. And then you leave that 
I always, oh, that's a mute thing. Always label it. This is a really good tip so that you know what your starting point was. You kind of know what to expect. I always label it with the date. And then I know based on my kitchen and the temperature there that I need to start tasting this in about a week and see if it's ready to bottle. Perfect. So, one little helpful little hint, if you buy these types of bottles, I strongly suggest you buy from either online or a beer making, beer supply, beer making supply store, a bottle cleaner like this because you really wanna get in there and scrub. So, that's how you make homemade kombucha. I love this process, I think it's amazing. I think the transformation is incredible and I'm so, I have a lot of pride in making this because <laughs> it's totally, you know, DIY from scratch. Um, and I think it's delicious. I have used kombucha as a cocktail mixer. Really? It's, good. it's really good. Um, the other day I made a granita with, I had a lot of kombucha and so I froze it and scraped it up and made a granita. Great. We're going to Ann's house <laughs> for happy hour. Great. And I wanted to show you guys, I know this is kind of nerdy, but um, this is a, a great book that has a lot more information than I can even share with you. It's called The Art of Fermentation by Sandor Katz. Um, in this book, he talks about all types of fermentation, but certainly um, kombucha is included. And so you know the mother, the SCOBY that I showed you? <laughs> People do all kinds of cool things with it, including someone made clothing, made this jacket out of SCOBYs, which is like one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Literally crazy, it blows yeah. my mind absolutely blows my mind um and they just kind of separated into the layers and let it dry and they fused together and they made this like fabric other people um either feed the um scobies to their dogs or they make candy from it which is kind of cool so so much um, fun oh well thank you ann thank for you. showing us all of this stuff and letting me try some of your delicious kombucha i'm not totally afraid of Mothers. Can we go anymore? over some of the different types? Yes. Yeah. So if you're still with us, um, <laughs> we're moving away from the homemade and we're going, uh, well, actually, I brought in some of my homemade if we want to try. But we we're going to um, taste test some, um, some purchased kombuchas and see which flavors we like. Before you do that, Ann, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Can you go over what kombucha does for you? Yes. And why it's good for you? Kombucha is. Um, a probiotic beverage, so it's full of good for you bacteria. All this bacteria is good for your gut. We're finding out more and more about gut health and uh, your gut microbiome, which means the colony of bacteria in your gut and how that's so good for you and so important to overall health. It's linked, a good gut microbiome is linked to everything from good mental um, well being to brain health to um, weight maintenance so really? oh, also immunity huge it's huge so much of your immune system is um, is based in your gut and so that's why probiotics are so popular right now and so big and kombucha is a great probiotic drink um, cool. and like I was saying early um, early in this um, video I started making my own because I love it so much I drink it every day um, I drink at least one of these big bottles every day and it got really expensive, so I started trying to make it myself. Now, if you're new to kombucha, I would say, just like with a lot of things, start slowly um, and see how your body reacts. It is carbonated, it is fizzy, it does have the bacteria and the yeast in it. Might make you a little gassy. Um, <laughs> just see how your body does. Start small, sorry. So, um, should we start with the original? Let's start with the original. So I've actually never had the original. I've only had like their strawberry and I think it's cosmic cranberry. So this is GT. Delicious. This is original unflavored. I get nervous when, oh, I think this cup is cracked, so I'll drink this quickly. Uh -oh. Cheers. Mmm. So the original is tart. It's kind of like um, a I like really it. tangy, fizzy I like apple it. cider. But, but like more it. tart. If you were just going to start drinking kombucha, that would be a good one. That's a good starting point. This is clearly kombucha Asian pear. So my husband loves this one because it's a little milder and they strain it so it doesn't have the little floaty guys in there. Um, don't explode, don't explode, don't explode. Which, um, those guys don't bother me, but. Um, the Asian pear is just it's an coming. interesting flavor. It's coming. Uh oh. The towel's behind us. Okay. 
I'm gonna move on and open another yeah. one. Yeah. Let's just open them all. Yeah. So this is another GT's. This is probably the most popular brand you'll find out there. This is ginger berry, so it's a combination of ginger and I think blueberry. Um, yeah, blueberry. Okay. So first we'll try the Asian, Asian pear. pear. Cheers. Cheers. It's really fizzy. It tastes like candy to me. It's super light. Yeah. Um, the Asian pear flavor is there, but almost like, to me, like like a Jolly Rancher version of yeah, Asian Yeah, it is a Jolly yeah. Rancher. Okay. Um, okay. Let's just keep doing it. GT's ginger berry, combination of ginger and blueberry. I love ginger um, flavored kombuchas. Um, I think the ginger spiciness enhances the fizz. That one's pretty color. It's so good. That is really good. The ginger is very pronounced and gives it like a yeah. little bit of that tingle in the nose. Um, but it's also, I like that a lot. It's slightly earthy. Now this one, you really like Health Aid. I love this brand. I don't think I've ever had their beet kombucha, so I'm very excited about this. They also had, and I was nervous about this, but it was cayenne and ginger something, but it just made me nervous. It scared me. Cayenne, mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> It's like the master cleanse. That's scary. Then where did you find all of these? Look at that color. Oh, that's crazy. Um, these are typically like in the dairy case. Um, normally it'll be close to your milk and your eggs and whatnot, or it's going to be in the drink case of yeah most, most grocery, grocery stores. stores. Or sometimes in the mm -hmm. produce section where they're starting sometimes. to put the fresh pressed juices. Do you see this color? It's amazing. So this is the beet kombucha from Health Aid. This guy. Oh, I love oh that. wow, it's very beady, which mm -hmm. is awesome if you love beets, and I do. I like that. Beady. Okay. It's slightly less fizzy. Like it has a little bit less of that uh, carbonation. It's not what I would normally think of kombucha. Yeah. You know, like I think of it yeah. like exploding on me, like the other one did. And have you ever put chia seeds in your kombucha? I have not done the chia seeds. I know I see that out there. Um, I haven't tried it because I'm not a huge personal fan of that texture. Mm -hmm. um, but I know a lot of people dig it. I, and I don't know what the ratios would be, what you would do. So which, this is? This is the, that, the one I'd never seen before. It's a cute bottle. Yeah, I think it's citrus. That's really bright. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay. slightly less um, effervescent. And now, if you want to be a guinea pig, I'll have you try one of my homebrew. Okay, um, I think we have time for woo. carbonation. It's like so. This is basil. All I did again was pour, put a basil sprig cool. into some plain, um, unflavored kombucha. That's probably my favorite one, oh, actually. Oh, aren't you sweet? I don't say but anything really that I don't mean. I like it very tart, and so that's yeah. a good thing about brewing your own. You can take it to whatever flavor level you like. Yeah. So that is a lot about kombucha. <laughs> if you're still with us, thank you so much for hanging in there. It's something that's very easy to do. If you're into kombucha, it ends up being a lot cheaper to brew it yourself, and then you can start becoming the scoby lady yourself and giving away baby <laughs> scobies to everyone you know. Thanks so much. Join us next time.